This video is sponsored by 365 Data Science. In 1972, the mathematician and meteorologist Edward Norton Lawrence came up with an analogy. It's the idea that a flap of the wings of a distant butterfly can somehow change the formation and course of a tornado thousands of miles away. This is the butterfly effect. Over the years, the butterfly effect has become a general concept now that refers to the idea that a small change can have rippling effects across an entire system. So before I unravel the mysteries and talk about why it works, I just want to make a quick plug for my newsletter called Boop keyboard it's about productivity it's about learning it's also where i drop releases for things like lonely octopus you can sign up for free using this link over here also linked in description let's set the scene our story starts with our friend called derek derek is 31 years old and his life is a complete mess derek dropped out of college in junior year but he never really found a career that he was actually into so he just bounced from job to job to pay the bills barista to waiter to valet from the stress of the job he also started drinking and smoking a few years back though things changed for derek he met a girl he really loved this girl and he ended ended up marrying him, promising to her that he will change his ways. But alas, no matter how hard he tried, he just couldn't couldn't hold down a job, couldn't stop drinking, couldn't stop smoking, and at some point, the girl got sick of his shit and served him up some divorce papers. Derek was devastated. He was married and then divorced by the age of 31. His career never took off, his finances were a complete mess, he was addicted to alcohol, to cigarettes, he was overweight, and no matter how hard he tried, he was just stuck in this pattern and couldn't get out. But one day, riding the bus home from a very long day, he saw an advertisement. It was a study being conducted by the researchers Megan Olton and Ken Chan at Macquarie University of Sydney, Australia, and it was about a new method of improving finances. He was absolutely desperate, and since his finances was one of the like 20 problems that he had, he jumped at the chance and signed up for the study. Luckily, he was accepted. The study was over a four-month period and focused on putting participants through what is called a finance monitoring program. They were instructed to set financial goals for themselves and asked to exercise self-control in order to meet these goals. Things like denying themselves eating out, going to parties, and buying luxury items. The study was super annoying in the beginning because they'd ask participants to write down every single thing that they bought and record down their mental state at that time and what it is that they were thinking about. But Derek managed through it. Every month, he would come in for a check-in and Towards the end, it wasn't so bad. He got used to having to write everything down. By the end of the program, Derek was actually really happy. He found that his finances were in a much better shape and he had the confidence now to keep going on by himself. But what was far more surprising is that he actually realized that he stopped drinking completely. He also cut down his cigarette consumption from 15 to 20 cigarettes per day to around five or six. He was even more cognizant of what it was that he was putting into his body. He started a diet and has lost 10 pounds. This is crazy because somehow this one habit of financial monitoring not only helped his finances, which makes sense, but it also transformed other areas of his life without him even intentionally doing anything. So yes, Derek is a fictional character, but the study was actually done. There's also other studies that replicated these findings across people of different ages, different socioeconomic class, as well as I guess like level of fucked upness, like people who were just struggling with their diets, for example, all the way up to people who had drug abuse problems, who were trying to integrate back into society after going to prison. All of them somehow just focusing on implementing a single behavior and making that into a habit had positive rippling effects throughout their entire lives. Now this behavior is like the butterfly flapping its wings. And I didn't even tell you the coolest part yet. The exact behavior, which in this case was the financial monitoring program, doesn't even need to be that. Like there's nothing actually special about a financial monitoring program. Studies were able to show similar results even when the behavior was completely different, like dieting, exercising, uh, cleaning things, even developing a study habit. So let's talk about this mystery here. Why does it work? You see, a lot of things that you want to do or not want to do in your life depends on self-control. For example, if you're trying to go on a diet and not eat junk food, nobody is like forcing a cookie into your mouth. You just don't have the self-control to resist the cookie. Same with exercise. Probably nobody is like, sit on the couch and do not leave. It's just like you can't motivate yourself to get off the couch and actually go for a jog. Research shows that children with better impulse control and self-regulation, that is self-control, are much more successful in life. So before you click off this video and go, like life is all doomed because I have no self-control. I have good news for you. Turns out researchers do have a hypothesis that self-control is more like a muscle. You can strengthen it and improve it with repeated practice. Olton and Chang, the researchers from previously, they were interested in investigating this self-control muscle. They hypothesized that if you can pick a habit, for example, this financial monitoring program, and you're able to practice this over and over again, this will be like training your self-control muscle and strengthen it over time. Then with better self-control in general, this is gonna radiate throughout your entire life and make you much more disciplined in everything. 
this study, as well as subsequent studies, have provided evidence to support this hypothesis. So yay! It's okay if you have no self-discipline and no self-control. You can actually train yourself to do so. Okay, so you're probably like, excellent. And the natural question you're probably going to ask now is, what is this behavior that triggers this butterfly effect? Let's talk about that. It's called a keystone habit. The name keystone habit comes from the word keystone, which refers to an arc and like the center stone within that arc is called the keystone because it holds everything together. And if you remove it, everything comes crashing down. So a keystone habit refers to a habit in which all the other things are built upon. This was the exercise, the financial monitoring, the studying that we were talking about earlier. But since we know a keystone habit can be many different habits, what exactly defines a keystone habit? And how do you choose one for yourself? So I kind of did some research on this and looked at some papers and things like that. And I realized that people would mention certain things like baking their bed or like live streaming or, you know, studying and waking up at 5 a.m. Like things like that. They would give a lot of examples, but there was no like specific criteria. But it also doesn't seem like you were just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping that one of them sticks. It seems like it's very hard to define because it's very individualized and usually involves a lot of experimentation. For example, Michael Phelps, if you guys, I'm sure you guys know Michael Phelps. He's the guy that is very good at swimming. His keystone habit, which he formed with his coach many many years back is him playing a movie in his head of the perfect swimming competition in which he obviously wins so he would play this movie over and over again in his head like before he sleeps when he wakes up and before a swimming competition his coach said um and i don't remember if he said it in a interview or it was a book uh, but he basically said that after they were able to establish this keystone habit everything else like all the other routines they kind of just all fell into place to find this keystone habit the coach said that they he kind of like look at the traits that michael phelps had he was obsessive he was competitive and then he kind of like thought about what are the best habits for someone like that and then they tried a bunch of different things and realized that you know that that movie playing in his head is the best keystone habit for him i know it's not perfect and for myself i also did a lot of experimentation to find something that works for me i tried a lot of things like making my bed journaling waking up really early none of it really stuck so i try to like be more introspective as well and i thought about like okay like what are the things that um, make me feel good afterwards? What are the things that match my traits? And I realized it's something that usually happens early in the mornings. Like if I'm productive and I feel good early in the morning, that trickles down and makes my entire day good. While on the other hand, if it's something, if I start my morning bad, then everything kind of just like goes to shit as well. And then I realized that the idea of talking to someone in the morning, like something motivational that involve other people, really made me feel good about my day. So that's how I settled upon live streaming study with me in the mornings. Study with Tina. So if you're also looking to find a keystone habit for yourself what i would recommend is just like introspecting first of all what do you think matches yourself like what are the things that you do um that you feel a lot better afterwards and then also i would recommend just thinking about like what time of the day matters the most to you i think a good keystone habit is something that's also relatively short like you're able to do it at least on a daily basis the last thing is that i think it's something that should clearly follow the habit loop which if you're not familiar with i highly recommend reading two books called the power of habits um as well as a atomic habits but basically the idea is that habits come in a loop first you have a cue and then you have a routine that you do to satisfy that cue you end up having a reward and then you have a craving for it so cue routine reward craving for example for live streaming the cue is a certain time of the day the routine that i do is the live streaming the reward is that i feel energized i feel happy and i meet my friends uh during the live streams and then the craving is that then i want to like go through this loop again so that i can see my friends again so i couldn't find your research to back this up so this is kind of like my general experience uh so do let me know in the comments if you go through this exercise what it is that you land on like what what works for you so before i end this video i do want to talk about one more secret ingredient that can really help you establish that keystone habit into your life and that secret ingredient is other people i accidentally stumbled across this myself just because my keystone habit naturally involves other people but i actually saw a lot of research that suggests if you're able to include other people into your habit you're much more likely to stick with it and the reason why this works is that people are important we are inherently social creatures we're greatly affected by people and we're greatly influenced by people if you've ever been in a situation where if you're in a group of friends you over time you actually act more and more like your friends there's a saying forgot who said it if you have a person if you want to know who this person is you look at the five closest people in their lives another great example of this this is companies. Companies have their own cultures and those values, that culture is something that when you go into work, uh, that's something that affects you greatly and the way that you think as well. For example, for me, I left Meta for many months now. Yeah, I realized that a lot of the things that I say, the terminology that I use, even the way that I just like organize my own life comes from the culture at Meta. That's how powerful it can be. But be careful, it also works the other way around, of course. That's how you get yourself into a bad crowd and then end up 
being bad situations as well. So yeah, the people that you choose can make or break you. Some examples of how to incorporate other people into your keystone habit. For example, if your thing is exercising, having an exercising buddy, a gym buddy, uh, or joining some sort of exercise class, that's a really good choice. If you're trying to establish a study habit, for example, studying with other people can be a really great way, which is a perfect transition for the sponsor of today's video, 365 Data Science. 365 Data Science is an online learning platform where you can learn about data, business, and of course, data science. I've had a close relationship with them for two years now, ever since I started my YouTube channel, essentially. I personally have two courses now with 365 Data Science. One of them is called SQL for Tech and Data Science Interviews, where I go through my five-step framework around how to approach data science interviews. I also have another course with them that's about how to use data in order to transform and to grow your business. So I have these two courses with them, and they also have a variety of other courses, 55 courses and counting. You can choose individual courses. We're also defined career tracks and certificate programs, which is especially helpful if you're in the beginning of your career or if you want to switch careers. They've invested heavily in user experience. And I really like that their platform is designed to be engaging and to help you succeed in landing a job. I love that they really care about their students and what happens after they learn the material and not just about like selling courses in general. They have resume builders as part of their platform. And once you're qualified, you're also given the option to join a group of candidates, which 365 Data Science connects you to the companies and they can interview you directly. They carefully screen who it is that teaches these courses, so I am very honored to have been included in that catalog. If you're interested in any of these courses, you can check out the link in the description where you'll get 57% off their complete data science training. All right, now back to the video. So there's one more thing that I do want to confess and it really like makes me realize how important it is this keystone habit is. Um, it's the fact that I'm currently experiencing the repercussions of not doing my keystone habit. So my life has been super chaotic recently. I've been been traveling around a lot, my schedule hasn't been stable. So I've stopped live streaming consistently for a few weeks now. Um, and this week I haven't live streamed at all. And I'm really feeling this because I just feel awful in the mornings. Like it just feels like I, I'm just so much less productive. I don't feel good about myself. I feel a lot lonelier because I don't have my friends um, that I usually live stream with. This really goes to show how important that one habit can be in your life. And it's something that I'm really trying to get myself to start doing again. So you guys keep me accountable uh, for that. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that this was an interesting video and also a pretty actionable video. I would love to see you guys start investigating and thinking about what you can establish and report back. Report back in like three months or six months or something. Uh, I want to know where where it all ends up for you. All right, I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.